joining us. Uh, and thank you especially to uh, to our visitors. It's great to have you here. Um, we've got a substantial uh, agenda to get through tonight, so we'll try and be efficient about it. Um, but I thought maybe what we would also do to, uh, to bump up uh, our, our guests um, in particular is delay the member reports until later in the in the evening so we can dive right in on the substantive issues if, uh, if that's okay with everybody that 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 works okay um so but we can i think we can probably take care of our uh, minutes approval fairly quickly from uh, our last meeting uh in march um any amendments changes suggestions Anybody note anything from our our last meeting minutes that needs seeing some shaking heads? I'm going to assume that means nothing needs to be changed. Okay, we'll consider those um, those approved. So let's go right into uh, the first uh, agenda item under old business: the International Holocaust Remembrance uh, Alliance. Um, uh, resolution uh, on anti-Semitism, and we're delighted to have Jay back and to welcome uh, Myra Clark Siegel here uh, to help us uh, think through uh, this uh, this item. As you recall, uh, Jay brought it to us as a, uh, a, a possibility for the town to consider. Um, regarding uh, a statement on anti-Semitism and in particular, a, uh, a particular definition. Uh, we began a series of conversations about it. And at our last uh, meeting, we decided we needed some more information. I was to talk as well to the um, uh, director of the Center for Judaic Studies and Contemporary Jewish Life, uh, Avi Pat, who's a close colleague of mine and the Dodd Center, uh, you know, to get some context here. And then uh, we wanted to have a chance to, to hear from Myra uh, as, as well, um, who Jay, Jay recommended. So, um, uh, so, so that's where we're at. So we're considering this uh, important uh, resolution uh, to make a recommendation potentially to the town council um, and uh, as well as to potentially make any alterations we uh, we deem advisable. So uh, why don't I, I stop there and ask any of my uh, commission uh, mates if you have specific questions or thoughts or if you've had a chance to reflect on this uh, this document since the last time around. Um, I've read it through and I don't see anything objectionable as far as I'm concerned. Um, Myra, I just have one question and uh, it disturbs me and I need clarification, please. Um, I don't understand, and I'm Jewish, so you, just so you know. I don't understand how we distinguish between anti-Semitism, anti-Zionism, and Israeli politics vis-a-vis -vis the Palestinians. This has caused me a great deal of difficulty with colleagues and in my own head. So um, obviously I am opposed to anti-Semitism, but I need to disentangle this to the degree that it can be. And if you could do that for us, I would really appreciate it. And you're mute and good. I'm happy to do it. So first of all, um, thank you all for the opportunity to be with you. This evening, I'm just going to take one step back and introduce myself, if that's okay. I am the regional director for AJC, the American Jewish Committee uh, for Westchester Fairfield, uh, though our name kind of belies the fact that we actually oversee all of our work in Connecticut um, throughout the state of Connecticut, not just Fairfield. But it would be imbalanced to say Westchester, Connecticut in some ways. So there you have it. Um, AJC, just as a little bit of background, is the oldest Jewish civil rights organization in the United States. We were founded in 1906. And the principles that were uh, true to our founding are true today. Uh, the first part of that is ensuring pluralism and equality for everybody. Um, among that also is combating anti-Semitism. And among that is ensuring Israel's place in the world, just as any other country is among the family of nations. So in, in answer to your important question, Jane, 
The reason that I wanted to bring that up is one of the true strong suits of AJC, and one of the things that I'm actually proudest of is our interfaith intergroup partnerships. Um, we have a Muslim Jewish Advisory Council, we have a, a Latino Jewish Leadership Advisory Council, and, and you name the minority group, and mm -hmm. we have formal partnerships. And these are not just in name, these are in action and in deed. Um, we launched a community of conscience nationally with interfaith intergroup partners, and we did this in our region uh, last year as well, and, and it's active. Um, in fact, uh, in March, we just held an interfaith rally for Ukraine, um, which we convened from AJC, just as one example, um, with government officials attending as well. Um, that was done here in Westchester. In answer to your question, um, because I think it's a very good question, and I want to I want to give it the attention that it deserves. So anti-Semitism and the IRA working definition, and we call it IRA for short because International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance is a mouthful. So we call it IRA for short. Um, was created together by a group of renowned um, scholars and experts, uh, global scholars and experts on the Holocaust and on anti-Semitism. It actually took several years to develop that definition, the working definition, because they wanted, because it's difficult to come up with a definition. A definition is, is only so good as, as, as people understanding what it means. This is not a legally binding definition in any way, shape or form. We, it's called the working definition precisely to be a guidepost. In terms of Israel um, and, and your questions about Israel, let me say the first thing is that in terms of the working definition and even the examples with it, it is not meant to preclude anybody anywhere from criticizing policies of the government of Israel. In fact, if you want to find the greatest critics of Israel, go to Jerusalem, because the Israeli people themselves all criticize their own policies and think that they can do things better. Um, and, and the Israeli population is also not only Jewish, but obviously 21% Arab as well, and that is Muslim and Christian. Um, and so, you know, it is a robust democracy, I would say a hyper democracy. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. And anybody who thinks that their country is perfect really is part of an illustrious group of countries like North Korea uh, and, and some other countries of that ilk um, where, where democracy is actually not allowed. I say all of this because there are two real aspects I think that go to your question about IRA and the examples about Israel. First of all, free speech is absolutely enshrined. You can say whatever you want about any country, any policy, et cetera, um, in terms of this. Um, and in terms of, of anti-Zionism or anything like that, if you are opposed to the state of Israel's existence, that is your own business. Um, and you're not, the, the working definition, again, really talks about anti-Semitism. Now, are there examples of things about Israel in there? Yes, there are. But in the same way, A, it's not legally binding. These are examples of how it can manifest itself. The issue about Israel in the working definition examples is if you only are thinking about or criticizing one country's existence, existence, not policies, but existence, out of 193 member nations of the United Nations, you have to ask yourself why. That's the question. It's not, nothing's prosecuted, nothing like that. But if you were only questioning the existence of one country, the question is why. Um, that's really what it is all about. But again, uh, you know, and I, I apologize that it's a longer explanation, but I wanted to really give due diligence because it's a fair question. It's an important question. And I wanted to make sure that I hopefully answer it for you. I th you just get clarified what I was confused about. If you only ask it about, excuse me, that's like asking why did Will Smith get thrown out of the academy and all the other evil people weren't. Um, that's about racism. So I got it. Thank you. I've been wondering about this for years and I understand what you're saying. Great. Well, Thank you. glad that you asked it. Absolutely. Thank you, uh, Myra. Thank you, Jane. Uh, other Thoughts, questions from commission members? 
are we going to um, recommend that the town adopt this? Um... We, we, we could, we could. Um, let me just, I, I wanna ask just a couple of questions as well, Myra, just to get, I mean, I appreciate that, that explanation. I think it's really helpful in my conversations with, with Avi, um, you know, interestingly enough, he's, you know, I don't know if you know him, uh, Myra, but uh, he's teaching a, a new course on anti-Semitism at, uh, at UConn right now. And so I was, was very quick to have a, a lot to say. And of course, you know, central to that is, of course, there is no kind of settled consensus on a complete definition of anti-Semitism, as you point out. It's purposely labeled a working definition to recognize it's an evolving conversation in lots of ways. And I, I, I guess, um, you know, one of the, the ways in which it's evolved is the, um, is the Jerusalem uh, declarations uh, statement. I wonder if you could talk a little bit about this. So this is another, uh, it's a response uh, to Ira's definition right. in some ways, uh, you know, addressing some of the concerns you raised, Jane, attempting to be a little more precise in where some of those boundaries lie. Um, what's, your, what's your sense of that, uh, Myra? So the Jerusalem, there, there are a couple different alternatives that have been proposed um, uh, as a, as a um, an alternative, I guess, to the IRA working definition. Let me just say the IRA working definition to date has been adopted by over 690 entities globally, including the mar largest Muslim organization in the world. Um, and it also has been adopted by within that 37 countries uh, here in the United States, both by Democratic and Republican administrations have used it um, by the Department of Education and the State Department. 11 states have adopted it in a number of municipalities. I just wanna give you that framework in terms of the usage and adoption of the IRA working definition to date. The Jerusalem alternative has been proposed by some entities as what they see as an alternative. Actually going back to your question, Jane, about Israel. It's um, some people who are not comfortable um, with language about Israel in any way, shape or form. The problem with the Jerusalem alternative is that it works so hard to define what it is not, that it does not define what anti-Semitism is. It is so careful to parse um, and to try to address things in terms of it is not, it is not, it is not, it is not, it is not. Well, you know, how do you define then what something is if everything is what it is not? Um, and so we at AJC and I would say um, really mainstream Jewish organizations do not endorse uh, the Jerusalem alternative because of that, because the whole purpose of having a working definition of anti-Semitism, just like the whole purpose of having any definition about anything is so that you can define something so you have an understanding of what it is. And in this case, when we're talking about racism or in this case, very specifically anti-Semitism, if you define it, then you can address it and if you, know, you can measure it and you can address it. If you're so busy saying what it isn't, then, Again, if you're not able to say what it is, how do you address it? How do you measure it? That's one of the, the main issues that we have with the Jerusalem alternative. So it is not something that we at AJC endorse. And I'll just add one more thing just by way of background because I'm sure that not everybody is familiar with AJC. Um, we are very centrist. We are very centrist. We are neither on the political right nor on the political left. We are very fiercely nonpartisan um, because we believe that these issues of pluralism and combating extremism have no place in any one political party, but that they're incumbent upon all of us to really champion these values. So, um, you know, I will say that that's actually what I'm proud of also with AJC is that we're, we're known as the thoughtful guys. Um, you know, we, we really do um, take this middle road. We're nonpartisan. And I will also say, by the way, AJC for decades now has endorsed a Palestinian and Israeli two-state solution living side by side in peace through uh, directly negotiated um, discussions by the parties themselves. And AJC is very vocal, very public about supporting a two-state solution. So, you know, if there is any question about that, there should be no question at all. 
I hope that answers it, Glenn. Again, I know that this is a long answer, but these are no. I, this this, so this is why deserve, we're here, is because they deserve some airtime, uh, knowledge sure. to bear for us, and and you can see we're a we're a deliberative group, and we want to take seriously yeah. and think through this um, as a human rights commission who, as as Jane notes, takes anti-Semitism incredibly seriously, uh, notes that it is uh, um, uh, on the uh, on the rise across the country and around the world world and that having clear definitions is helpful. At the same time, right, I, I, I do think it's uh, it's worth deliberating about where those lines are, which uh, um, definitions are helpful, which ones may lead us in directions in which we're, uh, we're, uh, we're at odds with some of our other core values, which is to be able to um, identify a range of human rights concerns across uh, um, all societies, including our own. Um, so, so this is very helpful. Um, have you, can I ask you, and, and, and Jay, actually, if you can, uh, you, you might also know, um, have there been examples of uh, towns or places that have also taken this, uh, taken seriously the idea of this being a working definition and added their own um, additions, subtractions, clarifications to, uh, to the IRA um, document? It's a great question, Glenn. Um, so the working definition, the IRA working definition is really meant to be adopted, sorry about that, in its entirety, you know, as it is. I mean, again, these were scholars that developed it together over a great deal of time and agony over each word that's in it. Um, so in terms of other communities, they have not adopted the language to it, the communities that have adopted the IRA working definition, they've adopted it as is. It's a great question. Right. Yeah. Um, again, but I, I, it, the, I think that, that you started by noting it's not designed to be fixed; that it's a working definition. So that's why I asked um, in 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 that sense. So it, it's not uh, it's not legally binding, but the definition itself was crafted. Oh, sorry, I just spilled water everywhere. The definition itself was crafted, um, you know, to be the definition, the working definition, if you will. But it's not legally binding. But it's not, you know, it it it's not meant to be kind of, you know, crafted as, okay, you know, here's a recommendation. Now go at it and you know, write your own definition. I mean, if we don't have kind of unified language or clear language, then you know, how do you address these issues? How do you understand? How do you teach people what hatred is? If you don't have a clear way to say it, you know, if if one community over here is saying, well, I think hatred is if you wear the color blue, then, you know, I'm not going to talk to you. And if you at this community over here is saying, well, I don't like the color red. So if you wear the color red, then, you know, that's a problem. It's you have to have a clear framework for what you are using if it's if it's to be useful in any way, just like any other definition. Okay. It's a great question, but that, I mean, yeah. that is, I mean, just speaking very frankly, that is, um, I'm just cleaning up the water here, sorry. That is the, uh, the framework that it was decided to be. Hey, hey Glenn. Okay. Yes, please. Yeah. If, if I could also add in, and I'm not sure if you were also asking this, but I'll just throw this in. Myra and I had, as you may already know, Myra and I have been meeting with um, with a number of the towns that are part of the collaborative, the 14 or 15 towns that we kind of organized. And um, uh, South Windsor, just so that you know, South Windsor has adopted it. I'm happy to say that the Farmington Human Relations Commission adopted it a week or so ago. Um, and Weathersfield adopted it. We, we've been working with you, you know you folks. We've been working with the folks in Middletown, in Hamden, in Guilford. Uh, Clinton just adopted the mayor's uh, uh, the mayor's United Against Anti-Semitism, and I believe that they will be considering the Iowa working definition as well. Uh, you know, we've been talking with the folks in Glastonbury. So we, you know, so we've been working with and meeting with and having this similar discussion uh, with those other towns. Um, you know, in the hopes that their commissions will be 
you know, at some point in time, bringing it forward to whatever their form of government happens to be. So I, I just thought I'd share that with you guys as well. Great. No, I, I appreciate that, uh, that status update. Um, and these are obviously important conversations. So Jane, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, and I find nothing objectionable in this. And so my question is, what would be the most effective use of this document from us to the community? Because in another element of our agenda, our first priority is education of the public. So we adopt this, we say to the town council, we want you to consider this seriously and, and do a proclamation, but we've all agreed that that's not enough. We need to then among, and I know this is on the agenda much further down, we need to think about now what, what does this mean for our town and what projects do we think might be um, appropriate to take up because we said that we are opposed to anti-Semitism. So I'd like that to be, part of our personal agenda. And Glenn, if you want to say if you've imagined that, or do we just need to move on this statement and then move through the agenda and bring it up again when we talk about the purpose of the, the whole commission? Um, no, I think that's I think that's fine. It would be great to hear of examples of, you know, once towns have adopted this, what are the ways that they've uh, that, that then they've gone on um, in, in support of it? So I, I think it's really up to you all with with, you know, every town has its its own way of doing things and its um, uh, own approach to things in terms of education. I'll tell you a couple things that that we've done um, that, that may be of interest to you all, um, different things that different communities have done. Um, we actually just held a training uh, actually with a Muslim partner organization called Muflahon. Um, again, I, you know, speaking about our partnerships, which we take very seriously um, with our interfaith and intergroup partners, through a grant from the Department of Homeland Security, we just did training um, with uh, government officials, um, which included law enforcement, which included um, uh, officials from um, the Attorney General's office, State Attorney's office, etc., to do a briefing for them on racism. And within that, anti-Semitism is part of it, to do a training so that people really understand what these issues are. Uh, you know, and I think if we think back to the attack in Colleyville a couple months ago, a few months ago now in, te in Texas, um, uh, you know, one of the things was, how do you try to anticipate this kind of hate hateful act before it happens? for all of our communities. This is not just about protecting the Jewish community, but how do we ensure that all of our minority communities are protected? And I think going back to what you were saying, Jane, education is the first thing. So it can be, you know, we're happy if it's helpful to you all in any way, we're happy to do a training or a briefing for officials um, in, the, in the town for your government um, and law enforcement officials, um, for school officials as well. Because we all know that there are also, unfortunately, quite a few incidents that take place in schools. Sometimes it's kids who just are being dumb and they don't know what they're doing. But um, sometimes, and, and I have kids in high school, so you know, my, my son has come home and said, this was in the bathroom or this kid said this. And, we talk about how do you talk about those things? And it's not just against the Jewish community. Unfortunately, there's a, a lot of misperceptions and misinformation about every community. So those are some of the things that we can do is, is if it's helpful, provide other materials or help do a briefing or partner with you all on that. Great, thank you, Myra. Jay, anything that you know of uh, that towns have done? follow up uh not real i'm not sure what form i can only speak for what we're doing in farmington i'm not sure exactly what form that's going to take our town other than you know we are going to bring it forward to the town council once once we get through the budget season probably in may and i'm, I'm not sure i mean to me even a town council you know just making a statement you know, acknowledging this is a step in the right direction. And the things that Myra was talking about, like education and, 
you know, trying to impact uh, students and programs like that are also very important. So I don't know if that's really a very good answer to what you're asking me, Glenn, but, um, you know, okay. I, think, no, I, 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 think, I think just the adoption and then again, whatever form of government, you know, <laughs> acknowledging this working definition, being that it's not binding is, is, a, is a huge step in the right direction. For if that's helpful at all. Okay, thank you. And Amy? if I may, Glenn, um, this might be something that the deliberation discourse students could take on for like part of the speaker series with Myra and contacting maybe your partner um, with the Muslim Association that you mentioned earlier and, and get some other representation from other um, religions and have some sort of conversation that could be something really interesting next year. For us to take on. Oh, yeah. Oh, I would love to see us. The more conversations we have, the better off we're all going to be. And I think Great. that's a wonderful idea. And yeah, Derek says in the chat we could definitely do that. So um, yeah. I think that would be excellent. I know Felicia would be up for it. She's been very busy this year, but um, I think, and then Reza certainly was part of the deliberation discourse project in the past. I imagine that he'd be able to try and recruit some folks too if he sticks around with us. So yeah, Jane, that would be great. I'll be in touch with that. And then Myra, I'll follow up with you as well. And, and you know, Glenn and the rest of us will be chatting because I think the school could absolutely use something like this. In, in but, but so could the grownups in town and we need to remember them. <laughs> They're no, the ones absolutely, the Jane. who so, go to the schools. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think if we, you know, if we get this together early in the fall and and, and um, advertise well, we could have some nice turnout. Great. I want everybody to know that I just spent the weekend with a Jewish Buddhist teacher and a Muslim teacher learning how to write Jewish, Buddhist, and Muslim poetry, which I would be happy to share with anybody who has the patience, but boy, did I have a good time. It was wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> All right. It sounds amazing and inspirational. It was phenomenal. All right, great. Any other questions? We need a motion. Uh, or con uh, it may be in order now. Yes. <laughs> Do you want to make it, Jane? Yeah, I'll make it. I move that we endorse the resolution we have received today and further consider next steps in uh, implementing it, publicizing it in our town. A second. Thank you. All right. All those in favor? All right. Are you going to vote for your own re uh, uh, motion, Jane? Yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> All right, it seems like we have a consensus here. We will move this forward um, and uh, send it, get it before the town council, uh, as well as begin to think about uh, supporting programming around it. So thank you very much, uh, Myra and Jane, and uh, we'll keep you posted as it, uh, as it goes forward. Great. Could I just could I just ask a quick question? First of all, thank you very much. This is terrific that you folks are endorsing it. Did I? Is there? Is this something that, that is going to be considered again later in your agenda, or discussed, or are we? Are, are you done with that issue? Yeah. I, I think we're done with this uh, with this issue for now. We may have some general conversations about the overall role of the Human Rights Commission and some of the outreach and engagement and education work. Um, but I don't think we'll be making any more decisions with respect to this, uh, this particular right. agenda item. Thank you all very much. And Jane, thank you for mentioning my cousin Irving. I appreciate uh, it. I can't tell you how many how much work I did with him. Because I, sure, I ran I, a dormitory and he was in charge of keys and beds. I, I, I remember. He was a good guy. I miss him a lot. I, I miss both yeah. of them a lot. He was a, he was a good guy. Anyway, thank you very much for that, Jane. Talk to you guys all soon. Thank you. Very thank much. you all. Thank you all. I just want to also add this weekend is a very holy weekend for thank three you. Abrahamic faiths. So Ramadan Mubarak for everybody. Happy Easter for everybody. And Chag Pesach Sameach to everybody. Have a happy Passover. So Thank you all for this. You're you're taking us into this holy weekend so beautifully. So thank you Absolutely. so much. And uh, we're here as a resource. I put my email in the chat if I can be a help of any way. So thank, thank you. All right. Thank Take you. Have, have a good night, all. I'm leaving Bye. too.
All right, great. Um, okay, thank you all uh, for considering that. Uh, so now we'll move on to the next item, which is the sustainable CT. Um, you will remember that we are looking to support the town's reapplication here. And in particular, we were looking at a um, uh, equity statement uh, to propose. Yeah, Monica? Um, I think we actually have to go back to member reports. Oh, okay. Yes. Thank you. Uh, which Jane started with her reference of her uh, her poetry uh, workshop. But um, uh, so let's go back. Yes, to member reports. Barbara, please. Um, well, I contacted Sam Bruder about the affordable housing committee that's happening. And he said that he would keep me um, updated as to what was going on. That he's hoping they're going to have their first meeting next month. Okay. And are you going to, uh, are you joining that? Did they invite you? What's the, um, does it, it already they, have people on it or what's the? Uh, they didn't invite me to join it, but they said that I could be like a liaison with the Human Rights Commission if we'd like Perfect. to do that. Great. Okay. Thank you for that, Barbara. Um, other report? Um, I've been looking at the way other towns are celebrating Juneteenth. And obviously down south, they have big celebrations with barbecues and parades and all that. I've been looking at how um, nearby states and towns have been celebrating it. And sometimes it's as simple as um, a flag raising of, of the specific, um, that flag with the starburst, uh, an event speaker and a poetry reading and sometimes a performance of lift every voice and sing for on the simpler level. But I have other ideas if, if we, it falls on a Sunday this year. Although I'm a little curious because I, I guess, um, I guess Juneteenth is actually named on the nearest Saturday to Juneteenth. And it just happens to fall on a Sunday this year. But um, anyway, I have ideas for whatever, if we want to do something, whatever scale we want. Great. Thank you, Virginia, for looking into that. And we do have that as an agenda item. So we'll circle back and uh, and discuss more. Okay. Katie? Um, so updates from the human services budget land of budget land. Um, so the town council has now at this point taken the town manager's proposed budget and then kind of made some adjustments. Um, so one of the things that did make it in um, for my service area is um, two service improvements specifically related to um, youth services. And those are an addition of a full-time youth services social worker um, to be able to expand our services to provide services to EO Smith students of um, Mansfield residents. Um, so we are excited to have that um, being put forward in the budget proposal um, as a full-time position. It was originally um, proposed in the town manager's budget as a half-time position, um, but the town council moved to make it a full-time position for continuity and being able to maintain someone um, long-term. Um, so we're really excited about that opportunity. If that stays through the entirety of the budget process and then another um, service area um, improvement that we had specifically put in for um, in youth services that would be a part of human services benefit is we were able to put in for translation services um, for a certain amount of money um, to be used in the work that we do with youth and families, um, particularly where we might be working with a student in the school system who is, you know, English speaking to whatever degree they are um, in proficiency, but their parents maybe don't have um, English even as the second language. So having the wider availability of multiple languages, knowing that we are a very international community um, and we did get $6,000 um, put into the town manager's budget on um, that stayed in with the town council's budget for that. Um, if there is interest in advocacy, um, that budget for translation services certainly could be um, put into a different pot and expanded were it to be something that um, became widely available, not just through the human services department, but to make it globally available for accessing town services. But we're really excited that at least 
for, for now, um, our individual counseling services and intake services, we can speak with families in a language that is comfortable for them and letting them know um, the work that we do, um, the services that we can help connect them and their, their child to. Um, so we're excited for that. Um, the budget is an ongoing process forever, it seems like, um, and that'll kind of wrap up, I believe, in May um, with the final town vote on the budget. But those are exciting things that we have um, mm -hmm. as service expansions in new services that pertain to our work in equity. Great. Thank you uh, for that update, Katie, a reminder of all of us to pay attention to the budget, uh, which I haven't been yet, but uh, probably ought to. Um, and good good news on both of those fronts. Uh, let's hope they stay in and, and maybe more than hope, let's uh, monitor and make sure by uh, um, uh, reinforcing how essential those services are. Um, okay, other reports? Amy, please. Um, so yeah, Katie, that's phenomenal. I was just asked the other day to do some translating at school because there's no translators. Um, so that's very exciting news and, and that you're hoping that you're going to be able to do this in multiple languages is just fantastic. Um, and then second, in terms of advocacy, the, um, the so additional social worker you mentioned is also wonderful. And Derek, I'm going to let Derek speak in a moment, um, has been working really hard. We have on May 3rd, a uh, deliberation kind of deliberation encounter thing that we're doing on mental health and well-being. Glenn was with us when we did our first one in 2018. Reza, were you part of that one? Yeah, that was actually my first one. Yeah, so it was pretty hugely successful, um, but there's a lot of work that we still haven't done and students felt that it was necessary to revisit this, uh, this topic, is particularly in light of what's happened with the pandemic and families being stressed, knowing that uh, depression, anxiety, all these different things is up among young people. Now with confirmation of studies that have shown that TikTok and other social media contribute to these things, we all kind of suspected, but now there's you know, evidence. And of course, additionally, it's been declared that there is a, a, a mental health crisis among youth. So um, I think, you know, I'm sure Derek is, Derek is always very thorough. And I know Felicia is listening carefully. I'm sure they're taking notes. And this is something that we could put in to mention that it's in, a, it's in the works, right? But um, how wonderful it would be if these things came to fruition. Um, certainly, we see at EO, you know, a need for an addition, we have an additional social worker this year and there could be more. So, um, and I know that I'm talking, yes? Are you aware that the state is investigating the Killingly Board of Education because they- I am, yes, we've got the that Killingly in our- The Board of Education is terrible and has been, and part of their issue is the mental health and the harassment and the bullying of students. Right, been yeah, going we've been watching- for years, and I've even been involved in it a little bit. So I think this is a good time to really make a lot of noise. Yeah, we're watching it closely. So um, there should be a blast that goes out tomorrow. I've told them to contact you, Katie, because you said you have a magical person who knows who how to get these things disseminated. Um, so we will hopefully do that. The students have had several other speakers. We just spoke with the president of the NAACP last night. Uh, yeah, last night at UConn, who did a nice job. We had a... Um, we had a we had a encounters on um, cultural appropriation versus um, appreciation with a couple of individuals from UConn. We had um, Talak Rivas, who's in um, new in the theater department. Um, we had James Kelly, who's a coach at our school, and, and a couple other individuals. So that was a successful evening. But our big, our next big event, and I think it's a really important event to get people out again is, is um, the one, and I keep putting on Derek, I know Felicia's had her hand, but Derek's really done an incredible job spearheading this and Reza can now promote it too. Um, so keep your ears and eyes open for these uh, upcoming events. And yeah, please get the word out about the, um, the event, particularly mental health, because there's, there's so much that we can be doing. And if you can support us, that'd be fantastic. But yeah, Kate, Kate, that's awesome news, Katie. Great. Oh, one more thing. 
And um, we deliberation discourse, a number of members put forth a proposal to the National Council, uh, Council of Teachers of uh, English. They're looking, <clears throat> next year's conference is looking at translanguaging and um, literacy across cultures. And our proposal was accepted. So with a little luck, we will be going to California next year. There'll be three students um, to um, present and then um, myself and maybe one of the interns. So we're looking at embracing the multiple cultures in our, in our town and looking at literacy that way. So it should be pretty interesting. Super cool. All right, well, good luck uh, with that. Derek, do you wanna add anything? Uh, not at the moment. Okay, great. Well, congratulations to you two and Felicia. Um, you know, uh, obviously uh, we're very excited about the work you're doing and uh, do keep us posted on the ways that we can support. Um, any other reports? I think everybody's checked in. Okay, uh, so thank you all for all your good work. Um, let's continue on with our uh, agenda. Um, so jumping back into old business B, sustainable CT, as I said, we were uh, working in particular on an equity statement. Uh, and thank you, Amy, for recirculating that draft. And then Derek for taking a look and providing some, some comments. Um, Derek, I think your comments were spot on, very helpful that we have a very good start, but that what we need is a localization. Um, uh, of this uh, of this statement, so that it reflects uh, both the specific nature of the challenges and opportunities for equity in Mansfield, and then identify some key areas uh, that uh, that uh, the town should be moving forward on, and things like language accessibility may be exactly the kind of. Um, of items that we might want to include. So I think that one's not ready for prime time yet um, and should uh, should continue to be worked through, particularly by the town charge uh, subcommittee. Um, I don't know if anybody else had a chance to take a look at that document uh, other than Derek, I know you, you weighed in, um, but if there are any other comments or thoughts on uh, on the draft equity statement. Okay, I'll take that as a as a resounding uh, no comment. Uh, all right, so we'll uh, we'll take that up, move that forward, and have a, hopefully a more uh, Mansfield appropriate version of it ready for our next uh, our next meeting. Um, the third item under old business is the Juneteenth celebration. So circling back Virginia. Uh, so um, I did have a chance to talk with um, a representative of CORE Mansfield and the NAACP um, new youth uh, focused group. Uh, happens to live in the same house with me. Uh, so I talk with Mia, essentially, uh, as this has been a, a subject of, uh, of their conversations. Um, and that there is a thought that the NAACP youth, uh, and I keep wanting to say brigade, but that's the cultural awareness brigade. It's some other, uh, you know, youth junta or something. I don't know. Uh, but the, their youth group uh, thinking that they're new and this might be a good opportunity for them uh, to take some leadership uh, position, which I think is a, is a great idea. Um, so I think our role in that may be to, to support them and to support them in particular by uh, helping with those town related logistics like reserving uh, space, uh, you know, finding PA systems, uh, making sure things are, um, are, are accessible. So um, at this point, uh, my feeling is that uh, the Human Rights Commission can co-sponsor and support and take our lead from uh, these young people. But um, 
happy to, you know, and I think Virginia, your ideas are, are, are in line with the things that I'm hearing coming out of them. Uh, I think, you know, they would like to have music, they would like to have potentially some spoken word, um, poetry, uh, right? I mean, I the theme will be youth voice, so it all makes uh, a lot of sense. Um, the, the timing question, though, the other thing I think we can be helpful with is we know Juneteenth is now going to fall right between two other human rights uh, and equity related events in town, the um, Pride uh, celebration. That'll come um, uh, uh, right before the week on the 10th, uh, right? So about a week ahead of time. And then uh, the, um, uh, I, the, the forget what it's called, but essentially the um, Immigrant Voices um, uh, event being organized by the um, Stores Congregational uh, Church, which is happening, I believe, on, um, on Monday. Um, so the other thing I think we can do is help to connect these things so that they're mutually supportive and not in competition with one another, um, because I think they all fit with a, a, a theme that could um, could really uh, help promote what the Human Rights Commission does, right? All of these things speak to important aspects of our work. And I think by having a presence at all of them, um, we can uh, we can help elevate each individual event and make it more than just the sum of uh, three different things. Could the um, immigrant, uh, I forget what you called it, but for um, Monday, which would be the 20th, could that be moved to Juneteenth or do you know? I think they're pretty locked in uh, on, on okay. that date. Um, so, and I, and I think that's fine, right? I, I, I think it should not be, they should not be combined. June, Juneteenth, okay. is, uh, you know, is a specific commemoration of the right. end of slavery and the long struggle for freedom and justice uh, of the African American community, and so I think that that should be the center of that recognition. Um, okay. Other. I have one more question, um, Glenn. Did you find out anything about the? Uh... Witness Stone project in connection to Juneteenth, or is that going to be at a separate time? I think it's going to be at a separate time, in part because that's okay. uh, you know near the end of the school year. So okay. since the schools are leading the Witness Stone project, they want to push that up. I think it'll likely happen in May sometime that they're okay. um, they're looking at it. So I think we could have representation there at this uh, at this event, but the. The play, I think what the next step is the essentially the placement of the the stone right they had the mm -hmm. project. Um, uh, kind of walk through unveiling at the middle school a couple of weeks ago and and so the next step will be the actual placement and that will take place. Um, you know, I think in a, at a time that's more convenient in the school calendar, rather than one that revolves around the holidays date. Good. Hearing the the youth led component of Juneteenth is so awesome, and I'm I'm wondering how do we make it accessible to other youth, um, for for a timing standpoint, knowing that um, you know during the weekend is a challenging time to get youth together, and particularly if folks are celebrating with family um, and community during that weekend, we don't want to take away from those celebrations. Um, I unfortunately don't have my Mansfield Middle School calendar in front of me. Um, it is at the office, um, but I don't think they do late buses on Fridays, like we had talked about maybe that Friday the 17th, but I'm wondering if there's something that could happen that is and I, and I don't know if they're still running on like Thursday the 16th where students could stay and then take late buses home um, and then kind of removing any barriers for transportation, knowing that um, last year, one of the things that we heard about the flag raising celebration for pride was that families and kids really wanted to be involved and it happened at a time where they couldn't be. So looking at if we did find an after school time to be able to have those youth voices heard, um, in, in a community setting. So you had multiple schools available to do something um, and kind of remove transportation as a barrier. I'm wondering if that might be a fit. Um, and uh, unfortunately, I don't know if late buses are still happening on June the 16th, but they might be. Right. 
Um, great question. I don't know either, um, but I think that's an, an important feature. Um, you know, the other thing about the 19th, I believe it's also Father's Day. And so, you know, yet another kind of complication to the, the, the calendar. Um, but uh, I will push that uh, feedback specifically to uh, to Mia and the, the Youth Council. And, um, you know, I think uh, as they come into focus, they're very new. So I think they're just getting themselves organized. Um, those are good things to raise with them and, and so that they consider them as well. And, it, you know, as you know, the the um, uh, the NAACP is the Wyndham Willimantic chapter. It's not Mansfield specific, but rather regional. And so I think they're, you know, would want to be able to make it accessible uh, broadly across, uh, you know, as many of the towns as possible. My, my other question, my other thought, I know one of the things that we talked about last year at Juneteenth of the role of the town to not overstep, but the recognition of um, the need for reparations. And particularly in kind of looking at, here's this emerging group um, that is here to do the work, that is here to have their voices heard. Um, is there an opportunity for us, is the Human Rights Commission um, to petition town council, the town manager's office to make a donation specifically to that group um, for their advancement of their mission and have that be, um, you know, obviously symbolic gesture because nothing is going to ever be enough monetarily wise, but and in that commitment of good faith of moving the, the needle of equity at least an inch? I think that's a great, um, a great question. I think that's also obviously tied to the Witness Stones project, which is, you know, a historical excavation of enslavement in Mansfield. And uh, clearly the more specific we can be about the stolen labor and uh, accumulation of wealth that followed from that uh, within Mansfield, the better case we'll have that a debt is owed, um, you know, by, by the town. So, you know, we, I think it's worth still coordinating, even if the date of the unveiling will be in May, the findings and the relevance of that research, I think should feed into how the town, as a town, um, adopt whatever kind of statement or recognition or does its its work um, uh, because uh, the the research that went into the witness stones was not a part of the original um, uh, declaration uh, uh, of Juneteenth and so should be in in future ones okay all right, anything else on this uh, agenda item? Okay, so uh, moving forward into new business. Uh, and uh, Monica, I think this th this first one is from Heather, right? And she's, uh, I guess, not been able to join. She was gonna call in, but it doesn't look like we've got her yet. Yeah, yep, so this one was from Heather. Um, we can probably table it till the next meeting. Um, I also forgot, I was supposed to, um, give you guys some uh, information that Heather had given me about events that are upcoming. So I'm going to email them to you um, just because of what the flyer, I don't know how to put it in the chat, so. Sure, no, yeah, please please do share. Um, so uh, so yes, let's table this one and, and we can come back to it when, when Heather's available to discuss what she was, uh, she had in mind. Um, okay, so uh, moving on to the, the last two, which are more organizational. The first one is on, uh, vacancy, vacancies, as you'll all remember, um, Karen uh, stepped down um, uh, to, well, there was a mix up. She was supposed to be on the last one, but uh, unfortunately we had the, she got the date wrong and, and, and couldn't join, um, but has, uh, has left her, her position. Um, and so we've, we've been putting out a, a call for that. Um, it's also now, uh, I, I corresponded uh, yesterday with Samara Bruder, who has had a seat but has been unable to attend and participate. Um, and she has now resigned her seat uh, as well. So we do have a second opening. Samara's is a, an alternate seat. Um, uh, Karen's is a, uh, is a full uh, uh, seat. 
Uh, so we have essentially two vacancies uh, on the commission right now. Um, we were just informed that we do have at least one uh, person who has applied um, through the town and we'll be meeting with the committee on committees uh, shortly. So the tomorrow, uh, yeah, uh, so very shortly. Uh, so there may be some, some quick action uh, in terms of an appointment of an additional uh, member, but we certainly need uh, now a second member. Um, and I know, Reza, you're on tonight in part to think about uh, what your involvement might be. Um, and of course, we, we welcome, uh, you know, uh, folks joining us in this way. Also, you know, welcome other kinds of participation. Um, Jane, I know you, you, you wanted this as well on the, the uh, agenda. So uh, let me turn it over to you. For okay. Um, I made a flyer with how to apply and it had links in it and it's been posted in a couple of different places. It's on our website, it's on the town website. And I made a bunch of copies of it that I keep saying to myself, I'm gonna run around and hang up at the senior center and the community center and various other locations. But I'm very concerned that we make an active effort to recruit people and particularly people of non-European ancestry to be generic about it because we just if we're going to have a human rights organization we need to have a variety of people on it so this is what i have done i i know amy has talked to reza who was here today and i talked to um this is terrible i the guy that was here a couple of times ago what's his name cotton hollis cotton um and those are two people that we have contacted but we need we think we're going to get further if we identify people who we invite than if we just generically put out an announcement. So all I can say to anybody is if you have any friends, colleagues, residents of the town of Mansfield who have some need to be interested in the Human Rights Commission and are other than able-bodied members of the European descendant community, please talk to them invite them. And it's very important, I think, that we have people that have lived here a while and pay taxes and do all that sort of thing. Not, I mean, I'm delighted we have youth, but we also need elders um, who've got their roots put down here and have seen things. And then we have one guy on the town council whose name is Brian, and he was the emergency appointment. And he's very interested in what we're doing. And um, I've, I've discussed this with him and said, do you have friends? And he said, yes, he did. And he was gonna be talking to people. So that's what we need to do. If you know of anybody who you think might be interested, please tell them what we do, tell them how to apply. Um, because I, I don't know who this person is who has applied, but we don't wanna just get people one and two because they were the first ones in line. If we have other criteria about what we're looking for, we need diversity of perspective. So that's what I think about that. I have a question. Does the person um, have to be a United States citizen to serve on the Human Rights Commission? I do not believe so. Okay. I, I will say that in general, Mansfield town policy is we don't ask Mansfield residents about residency beyond their address in Mansfield. We don't ask about citizenship status. Well, I'm just wondering, I mean, United States, if they're not citizens, they can't vote. So I'm just wondering if that is an issue for a commission member. Uh, well, this uh, is not an elected um, commission, so I don't believe that that should be an issue, no. Okay. And I, I'll just note, because you said it, Barbara, it is... Um, there are places in the United States where non-citizens do vote, not in federal elections, but in um, in, in local elections. Um, and so, you know, if this is something we're interested in thinking about more broadly, that's uh, worth worth considering at some point. So, uh, okay, so yes, I think I agree, Jane, that uh, active recruitment is important here. Um, we do have a limited number of seats, but I think anybody who expresses interest, uh, we should, regardless of whether or not they're uh, eventually appointed to a seat, take that as an opportunity to engage them in conversations and have them be involved oh, yeah. in our work in whatever way they would like to be. This is not an exclusive club. We get anything we want to do done by partnering with the community and having them be um, invested 
And um, uh, so, you know, uh, again, just because there are two seats doesn't mean we just need to find two perfect candidates. We just need folks to take an interest. So um, I agree. And, and I'm, I am encouraged by uh, the person who has put their uh, their application in. Um, I think from what I've seen, she would be a, an excellent uh, addition um, uh, should the committee on committees and the town council decide um, uh, she would uh, she would be a good fit. So um, so at any rate, any other questions, comments on uh, these vacancies? I don't want to put Reza on the spot, and I know he's having some technical stuff, which is why his camera is not on. But Reza, is there anything, any questions that you have for us while you're here? Not today, but maybe maybe next time I'll have some questions because I have I have some notes from this meeting. So, yeah, I'll do my best to have a couple questions next time. And Reza, do you mind just quickly introducing yourself to people who have it? We don't know who you are. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so hi, everybody. I'm Reza. Um, I went to EO Smith between 2017 and 21. Uh, now I'm at UConn. I'm a computer science and engineering major um, and looking to pick up a minor in human rights. So it is important to me. And um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to continuing to work with you guys if, if you'll have me. So I will definitely apply. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, quickly. Yes, yes, quickly. And um, yeah, so that's me. It's, it's nice to see you all. Monica? Uh, do you have all the information on how to apply or would you like me to email that to you? Um, I might have it, but I don't remember. So I would, I would like you to email it to me, please. Thank Absolutely. You. Great. All right. Um, okay, so I think that's uh, that's good. That's uh, promising. Uh, let's continue to do it and um, and fill out the the, the vacant seats. Um, all right. The last item under new business is the Human Rights Commission charge, and I believe Jane, you wanted this on there. Um, I last meeting, uh, as you'll recall, I had to. Um, run uh, early, uh, so was not able to be here for the conclusion of the meeting. I know uh, Reverend Cotton spoke and had some recommendations around the clarification. So I don't know if this is, sounds like this is, might be in response to that, uh, that public comment. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Jane, why don't you take it? Yes, well, Reverend Cotton said that we needed an elevator speech because he, and this is a man who has done a tremendous amount of political organizing and was Barack Obama's uh, campaign chair in New England. So I think coming from him, we should pay attention even when we don't agree. Um, but what he said was, if he said, I've sat here for this entire meeting and I'm still not sure what you people are all about. So I thought, okay, I'm not sure we're sure what we're all about. And one of the things I wasn't sure about was what is a commission supposed to do? We have no budget, we have no active arms, but we have capacities to generate programs, but we are a commission. We are not an enforcement mechanism. So I thought it would be to our benefit to look at that middle um, delineation of our responsibilities in the charge and try to have some sense of what it means and where we're going forward for the upcoming year in terms of providing human rights education, being proactive, and making recommendations to address um, human rights violations. Um, I, I think from A to D is what we're supposed to be doing. But I want us to have some consensus about what that means in terms of what do we do? Where do we show up? What activities do we engage in? Um, do we pick a couple of educational thematic programs for the year? Do we, um, is that, should we be doing that first? And then when, and then the next question is, and then how do we find out when citizens feel like their rights are being violated? And I think those, uh, Margaret got that box designed and I don't know if any of you have seen the picture of it. She sent it around, look really like if you walk into a building and you see that thing and it says, your experience, if you have anything to say about human rights, put your comments in here. It, it's very visible and it's kind of nice to look at it. And, um, 
I think that's a good start, but what else should we be doing? Should we be holding regular open conversations with people? I think we should be having these um, group discussions that we were talking about, but what else should we be doing? If we get a, a violation re, uh, statement, we should be responding in some form, presumably to the town council. But I think we need to all come together on what, what's our focus and what's the primary responsibility and how do we move forward? So I think that's kind of where I am right now. I have a comment to make. Um, Thank you. It's, it's hard to provide human rights education without a budget. We've made a budget request. Okay. And I have been tutored about how to get grants, but for grants, you have to know what you're doing. You can't just say, give me money. Um, so if we have consensus, that, and, and I have one project in mind that I haven't moved forward on yet, but we can, we can do that and we can begin to try to get money if the town won't give us money. But if the town won't give us money, then the question is, why do we have a human rights commission? That's always, when there's no budget, that means we don't care, but we need one. Do you know about the Winnie the Pooh and Eeyore in the balloon? Excuse me, this is parenthetical, but relevant. Eeyore is a donkey who's very cynical. And one year they decide to give him a balloon for his birthday and he has no idea what you do with a balloon. And Winnie the Pooh is at a loss to say what you do with a balloon. So he's got this birthday present and it's a balloon and Winnie the Pooh says to him, well, what you do with the balloon is you uh, hold the balloon. So I have considered calling us the Balloon Commission or the Eeyore the Balloon Commission. And I don't like it, but I think we're in danger of, if we don't get focused, we're gonna be Eeyore's balloon. Um, we don't wanna just be held and say Mansfield has a human rights commission. We wanna be able to say, this is our focus. And if we need money, then let's designate a couple of people to say, okay, let's get some projects and let's go out and look for money. And we've asked the town to give us some as well. Okay, yes, uh, uh, we have asked, uh, and I need to follow up now that the manager's budget is out and it's in this next phase about where and, and how that might be um, coming, uh, eventually coming uh, to uh, coming to us. Um, all right, other thoughts on this piece? I mean, I'm hearing a little bit, Jane, right, about your comments and from what I read in the minutes from Reverend Hollis is, uh, you know, a kind of clear set of um, uh, of agenda items to be working toward. Yeah. And I think, you know, last year we um, uh, and we submitted our, our annual report and I know you've all taken a look. It's a pretty robust set of accomplishments all around uh, each one of these items in uh, in in some fashion. Um, but that was last year. And so the question of where we're going and what we're doing this year, I think, has been maybe a little more uh, challenging. Um, and uh, and I think it's a there's there's probably a variety of reasons for that. But uh, but I'm, I'm happy to have folks uh, begin the process of identifying strategic priorities for us to, to focus on. Um, I'm going to say that we we are making some progress, Shane, <laughs> okay, so that um, if we have a budget, if we do get some money from the town, then we can start to think about providing some educational programs. Jane has a bunch of good ideas and has already contacted people, but she needs money to pay for that, right? Um, some money, and yeah, some will be free and some we need some money for, but I would rather go ahead um, and do what we can without money. I, I ran the RA training program at UConn for 15 years with no budget, but I did beg and trade. You know, if you give a speech for us, we'll give a speech for you, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, but you know, the town could afford to give us something. I so think they we should. Pay some, in, we should have to do that. They them. really care about this, yes. Um, the other thing is um, we can make recommendations to the town council. We have done that and we can continue to do that. So we're doing that. Um, we've got, if these suggestion boxes go up, then we're being proactive in trying to get people's input to the commission. So that's a concrete thing that we've done. And that is also ensuring public active 
participation if we can get that done. So we're not totally useless. We're actually doing some things and we're on track, I think. Um, I'm gonna liaison with the affordable housing committee, which I think is important. I don't know. I can come to you and tell you what's going on with that. And then if we need to make recommendations, we can do that. I did have a thought that is probably not on the agenda, but Glenn mentioned that um, in other towns, people that aren't citizens, United States citizens can vote in local elections. Um, I'm wondering if that might be something we might wanna think about for Mansfield, if that's a possibility. We have so many foreign students in town who have kids in the school system and can never go vote for the school budget or um, I don't know. I mean, over the years that I've been in town, I think that would have been a good thing if some of those people could vote. Well, you know, even if what we could do easily is to get a public discussion going, because I know from my own experience, when there's an issue, but there's not a lot of noise, if you get the people who are affected by it to get together and talk to each other, things start to happen. So I would think that if, if you think that's a priority, that we could invite people because we have enough people in the schools um, to know who to invite to a conversation and say, do you think we ought to be doing anything? What, do you, what would benefit you? And then get them talking to each other. Yeah, I didn't even know it was an option. I didn't either, but I think it's a good idea. Is that a state to state option where Connecticut as a state would supersede anything that we wanted to do? Or is it a municipality to municipality option? Because that would be- have to find that out. Yeah, the states use that uh, requirement. Yeah, Monica, do you know the- I believe it's a state requirement. Um, my mom's a registrar of voters and we've had an, we had an issue of with where this happened and it, state law says that um, non-citizens cannot vote. Okay, so the, that's a moot point then. We're not gonna pursue that. Right, so uh, if that's the case, right, then we won't have voting yeah. uh, necessarily right away, but maybe that's something uh, that's still uh, recommendable uh, for our uh, uh, our state uh, representatives. Yeah. But what we could do is have a forum for parents from other countries who have children in the school to come together to talk about how they feel, what they think their kids need. We could just set up a forum. We could give specific invitations and you know bring in the pto bring in whoever else katie knows everybody amy knows everybody and get a bunch of people together and say okay we just want to get a handle on how well your ch children's needs are being met we can do that that doesn't require anything except a zoom camera if you think that's important and maybe a translator um <laughs> I could also, if I know that these will be, these ideas will be in the minutes um, in one way or another, I can also, the next time that the 14 town human rights group meets with Jay Tulin, I could also ask what they are, what their ideas are, and if this is something they'd like to explore with their towns and getting their representatives and whomever in, involved. And I think for, for the specific idea, it would be really important to get the two different board of education's buy-in on having it be a listening session um, and a right. collaborative partnership of like, we do want to hear from you as the school so that we're meeting your needs so that it's not framed as we as a human rights commission are here to sniff out the schools being naughty, but to really make sure that we bring those school districts on as partners to kind of have it be a listening session um, in, in partnership collaboration. Yeah, I think that's really a good idea and I easily forget it. But if that woman, um, what's her name? Myra, the way Myra was talking about all the collaborative partnerships that they have, I think that's a wonderful model. And I think what you just said is like that. Okay, well, so if we're looking for a theme for next year, we're talking about human rights education. Should we say to initiate a series of dialogues among different between different groups within the community around issues related to their welfare or issues related to their um, well-being in the town and just say we're going to initiate a series of dialogues and then we'll pick up what are the topics and who do we want to invite and move forward that way and make that kind of be the theme dialogue. 
community building dialogue, something like that, Amy, which is exactly what you're doing. Derek, why are you laughing at me? Because I was just about to say that, yeah, the Deliberation Discourse Project does a very similar thing at EO, so. Wonderful, wonderful. So I don't know, Glenda, I mean, do you, how does that sound to you? I think that sounds like uh, a great uh, theme uh, and one that we should uh, partner with DD on and, uh, you know, allow the experts in developing and facilitating these conversations uh, to guide us. And we can support that as a resource again, not just for the school, but for the whole um, community. And, and as we know with EO, that's not just Mansfield either. So, um, you know. Okay, Amy, so can we talk about that a little more when you have a minute or three? Absolutely. And this very holy weekend of everybody's religion at once, we can talk to each other. Yes. I think just I want to point out um, with the HRC charge, one of the things that, you know, we have done in this past year, and I'm going to kind of say like I was bad and I didn't get on today's agenda, but maybe people will allow me to put it on at the bottom of new business is um, the proclamations that we have made recommendations to town council, because while those might not be concrete services, those might not be direct to citizen education moments, town council signing a proclamation for Pride Town Council, signing a proclamation recognizing Juneteenth, that doesn't happen in every community. Um, and so it having official backing from our, our systems of governance based on our recommendations um, that we bring to the table that they might not even think about, that is a really important part of the, the kind of macro level work um, that does need to happen in order to facilitate that, that more direct level of work as well. So one way to say that would be that our first target for education is the town council. I like that. It's, it's, an, it's advising our elected officials about the importance of issues of equity, diversity, and celebrating our community in, in ways that we might miss if we're not otherwise paying attention to it. Good. And and then my naughty thing that I didn't put on the agenda was getting um, proclamations for Pride Month onto town council's agenda for May, if, if we're able to do that again this year. Um, and I should have put it on the agenda, whoops. Have you got it written or you just want a statement of confidence in your ability? <laughs> I didn't write it last year. Glenn Glenn took the, the base from the previous year and okay. judged. We and and we'll we can do that again although i was clearly working from uh the very capable uh you know template that you had uh, set so um so yes let's add that the um the town charge subcommittee can do that as part of that that, that work with the town council we'll have that for us to consider at our well it's april uh, well, why don't we uh, say, so Monica, if we're going to vote on something, we need to add it officially to the agenda right now, right? Yeah, I would I would do it probably tonight just because the next exactly. meeting is the 26th and okay. we want it on the first meeting for the town council. So, so I need a, a motion to add this item to the agenda. So moved. Uh, so moved. And then Amy, did you second? Did I, see I did. You? Okay. Uh, all right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And then we need a motion to have the Human Rights Commission uh, draft uh, or the Human Rights uh, um, Town Charge Subcommittee draft and send to the Town Council a resolution recognizing Pride Month. We need someone to move that. Moved. And a second. I'll, I'll second it. Thank you, Barbara. All right. All in favor of that? Aye. 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 Okay. So we'll we'll take care of that so that it's on the town council's agenda for May. And and then I I waited until after you said yes to say here. 
<laughs> um, we were actually really excited to be able to get the new inclusive Pride Progress Pride flag um, that has the intersex yellow triangle as a part of it. Um, and I was able to order 1,000 this year instead of 500. So we will be using those miniature flags as giveaways, and um, those will be the large flags that are hoisted at any building who wants to. That Super is cool. Awesome. Fantastic. All of our flags on our street were stolen this year. Yeah, someone was jealous of your pride and just wanted it all for themselves. And you know, like, I'm, 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 I'm trying to be positive and think that's what it was, <laughs> <laughs> but somehow I think that it wasn't the case. But yeah, so I will be, I will be at the door looking for more, and I'll bring them over to the GSA kids. That's great. Thank you. I can, I can send you a bunch. Like I can just walk them to you. I can, I can do that thing. But they have to wait until June because they'll manage. It's. It's LGBTQIA plus Christmas month in June, let's be honest. Oh, we just had, I'm sorry, I should have told you this earlier. We just also had a very successful um, day of silence. We practiced it early because we are off next week, week for the official day of silence. We had over a hundred of pe hundred people sign up either as allies or to practice the day. We had three, four, four faculty members, including myself who participated. Um, and then we had about 40 kids who participated in Day of Silence. So it was, it was actually very, very um, much more successful than we thought it was going to be. It was very moving. So yeah, we gave out um, pronoun pins and, and stickers and um, it was, it was a nice day. It was, it was successful. Thank you. Monica? Katie, um, as I'm looking at the calendar, are we, are you okay with um, it being on the first council meeting in May, which is I think the ninth, or are we trying to get it on for the next council meeting in April? Um, I think May should be fine. Okay. If we're at the early part of May, that gives them the rest of the month, knowing that it is budget season um, and, and all of those things in that. Um, brings it back to top of mind earlier so that um, should the town officials and town manager's office wish to organize a flag raising ceremony um, that they have opportunity to, to do so and to be able to kind of coordinate that um, with, within a month. Thank you. Okay. All right, so that you, you said, Monica, the, the ninth, that's when the next, uh, okay. So we'll target the, the uh, to be able to communicate it to them the week before. Uh, okay. Uh, and are we already on their agenda for any proclamation that we're doing for Juneteenth or would we need to kind of? We're not, so we'll do that one then a couple weeks later, uh, you know, so we're not um, we're not cross programming ourselves with uh, double proclamation. So we'll we should have one more HRC meeting. Um, so if the the town council's meeting is on the ninth, our HRC meeting is on the eleventh. So we'll go for the next meeting, uh, which would then probably be the sixteenth of May for uh, uh, the eighteenth. No, sorry, not 16th, the 23rd. And um, I hope uh, I can be granted forgiveness, but the 11th is the Empty Bowls uh, event at school to raise money for the um, Covenant Soup Kitchen, but also raise awareness about food insecurity in our community. DD is involved, and I also have committed to volunteering that evening. So. Um, I will not be there, but I'll certainly let you all know and I'll, you know, keep up on the notes. Okay. What time is that? Um, six to six to eight or six to nine, I think. Okay. I mean, we may look to, we could shift it. I, you know, I also like one of the things I think as, and this is changing since we're kind of, I think at the beginning of a little mini surge here in COVID, but I thought it would be nice maybe if we begin to have at least some meetings in the public 
um, you know, maybe we have the meeting there at EO that night. So it's a way of endorsing. The, anyway, um, we can we can talk about that. Derek? Uh, I just had a question. Is that the thing that I that we're working on the uh, National Issues Forum Guide um, for? Yes, it is, Derek. And Derek's been very Oh, helpful. okay. Yeah, thanks. Thanks we so have um, rewritten the guide that's going to that mimics the National Issues Forum, the official one about food insecurity and land of plenty, um, to try to better fit it to our community and looking at some of the issues within Connecticut and and locally. So we're working with that. Fantastic. I just made a few more revisions, um, like shortly before joining this meeting. So if you look at that at some point, please do. <laughs> Oh, all right. Uh, so a lot, lot going on, a lot coming up, uh, lots for us to be involved with. Hopefully, Jane, clear, uh, you know, soon it will feel like we are, uh, we have that elevator pitch uh, down about what we are and, uh, and what we do. Uh, okay, uh, so moving on, I don't think we have any communications or uh, members of the public. Um, although I don't want to uh, skip over Felicia or Derek, if you've got anything else you would like to report out on that you didn't uh, hear us cover so far. All good. All right. Um, uh, so then our last uh, items will be the uh, reports from the subcommittee, town charge committee. Uh, I think you, the main thing we had talked about was sustainable CT. We did not have a quorum at our last meeting, so there were not a lot uh, of business done. So no, uh, no report out, uh, nothing else to report out there. Communications and outreach, anything from that group at this point? I question though, um, we have, these um, suggestion boxes, do we need to make an official statement about where to hang them up or what are we doing about that? Um, I think, think uh, I mean, are they up? I thought they were up at the community center. I um, don't know. All I saw was the picture Margaret sent around and it looked like it was a real thing. It wasn't just a, a mock-up, but I don't know if she put them up or had them put up any place. Barbara, do you know? I don't know. I didn't so. get the picture she sent out either. Oh, you're very nice. Um, well, should I write Margaret a note and ask her? Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I would. I mean, we have a meeting next week, right? The communications right. and outreach so we can hash it all out there because that's one of our projects, right? Right. Okay, that's our report. Okay. Monica, what? Um, I can send, I can forward the email to everyone if you all would like to see it. That would be great. I'd love to see it, yes. Great. And while we're here, I'm not going to be here in May. I'll be in Italy until May 21st. So. You're so mean, Barbara. You are terrible. Sorry. <laughs> You're nothing but jealousy. <laughs> True, it's true. Uh, but no, that's great. Uh, have a great, great time. Um, all right. Uh, I think uh, we have no public here for additional comment. So with that, uh, I think we are adjourned, y'all. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Arrivederci.